gone 25 past six. You might have seen higher interest rates on your mortgages and you might have been hoping maybe that would mean higher interest rates on your savings. But it doesn't always, as Hannah's been finding out. Morning. Morning, yeah. We often talk about debt and people struggling with the cost of living, don't we? But there are millions of savers out there as well. Somewhere. So, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in the ether they are there. So let's go back to the beginning and take a look at where we are now with interest rates and how we got here. Since the financial crisis in 2008, they had been at historically low levels, hovering at around 0.5%. This was because the Bank of England didn't want us saving our money. It wanted to encourage spending to get the economy going. That all started to change at the end of 2021 in response to high levels of cheap borrowing during the pandemic. Since then, interest rates have been going up, first to tackle the rising cost of living fueled by the war in Ukraine, and secondly, in response to September's mini budget, which created a lot of economic uncertainty. The base rate set by the Bank of England is now 4%, but customers are complaining that the mortgage rates offered by high street banks have risen more quickly than what they offer on savings accounts. The bank bosses disagree. If we look at the numbers, according to USwitch, the average two-year fixed rate mortgage rate in the UK is now 5.1%, with up to 4 million households set to see their payments rise this year. Meanwhile, easy access savings accounts seem to be hovering just over 3%. The best one I could find so far this morning is at 3.4%. This is just one of several issues that will be discussed at a hearing in Parliament this afternoon. And with the budget only a week away, Noor Nanji has been speaking to businesses in Slough about what they want to hear from the Chancellor. It might not feel like it, but spring is on the way, and so is the spring budget. This florist on Slough High Street is seeing costs pile up. It wants those to be the Chancellor's priority next week. I will keep my door open always as much as I can. But seriously, we need some support. The bills, the rent, electric energy, the price is getting very, very high. We need the cooler system for the, sh for the flower as it is cut flower. We have to keep it fresh under a special degree. Even the fuel price affecting on the delivery flowers. We are seriously struggling in this situation. The flowers here are blooming, but the business itself is struggling to grow. Customers are spending less because of the cost of living crisis. And with energy bill support for firms due to be scaled back from April, it's a worrying time. Ramia is hoping Jeremy Hunt will announce new measures to help with energy costs. She'd also like the fuel duty cut to be extended. <laughs> Rising costs are a problem for this gym too. Its overheads have risen by more than 30% in a year. Recruitment is the other major challenge and one it hopes the Chancellor will address. We make enough money to survive to, for the next month and then carry on running just so we can operate and help the youth in our community. And if they, a lot of the kids, if they didn't have this place in Slough, they'd be on the streets fighting. A lot of the kids, they can't afford to pay. But if there was an opportunity where they were given some sort of funding, start their training, then it would literally help them, not just in their training, but in their life. We actually lost one of our cousins six months ago to knife crime. We're even more like determined now. It's, it's really upsetting to think because of the cost of living is so high, I might not be able to carry this place on. Amar also wants to see an expansion of free childcare, allowing parents to get back to work. At this bakery, coffees and cakes are being served, but food prices have soared over the past year. The cafe manager wants Jeremy Hunt to reduce inflation and taxation. Food prices are gone up and uh, energy prices after the pandemic and the current situation that happened in Ukraine. I'm hoping that the VIT uh, will be cut and the business rate as that will help us to uh, keep the product in uh, lower prices. And how likely do you think that is to happen just given where the UK's finances are right now? Well, I'm hoping they will work out something, you know, to, to help the businesses and give the whole and they give us support to the businesses and uh, we're just going to wait for the plan. Firms have drawn up their wish list. The Treasury said it has provided hundreds of billions of pounds of support to businesses during the pandemic and the war in Ukraine and said the budget will set out the next stage in its plans for growth. Noor Nanji, BBC News in Slough. There's plenty there for the Chancellor to think about. John and Nina, we know the government wants businesses to grow so that it has more money to spend on public services, things like schools and hospitals as well. Plenty there to look out for in the week to come. Yeah, a week away now. Thank you, Hannah.
Now, higher interest rates. We've been talking about them for a few months now, haven't we? Uh, they should mean better rates for savers, at least. But despite banks saying deals are available, lots of you have told us they're not seeing the benefit. So you pay more interest on your mortgage, but not necessarily getting more interest on your savings. Hannah's here to explain. Morning. Morning. Yeah, we talk a lot about the rising cost of living, people really struggling, people getting into debt, don't we? But we don't talk quite so much, perhaps, about those savers who are out there. So let's have a run through it. Let's go back to the beginning and take a look at where we are now with interest rates and how we got here. Since the financial crisis in 2008, they had been at historically low levels, hovering at around 0.5%. This was because the Bank of England didn't want us saving our money. It wanted to encourage spending to get the economy going. That all started to change at the end of 2021 in response to high levels of cheap borrowing during the pandemic. Since then, interest rates have been going up first to tackle the rising cost of living fueled by the war in Ukraine and secondly in response to September's mini budget which created a lot of economic uncertainty. The base rate set by the Bank of England is now 4% but customers are complaining that the mortgage rates offered by high street banks have risen more quickly than what they offer on savings account. The bank bosses disagree. If we look at the numbers, according to USwitch, the average two-year fixed rate mortgage in the UK is now 5.1% with up to 4 million households set to see their payments rise this year. Meanwhile, easy access savings accounts seem to be hovering just over 3%. The best one that I could find this morning so far is 3.4%. That's just one of several issues that will be discussed at a hearing in Parliament this afternoon. And John and Nina, with the budget only a week away now, you can be sure that the cost of living as well is going to come up in that hearing. Yeah, a week for the Chancellor to make some big decisions.